These days, we're not at all surprised when companies known for making sports cars branch out to make SUVs. After all, the success of vehicles like the Porsche Cayenne and BMW X5 have shown it can be really, really profitable for car makers. Now Italian brand Maserati is getting into the SUV game with this, the Levante. Of course, there are a lot of really compelling, sporty, luxurious SUVs on the market, so it's going to be a tall order for the Maserati to impress us. How does it look? That enormous grille dominates the front end and will really determine whether or not you like the Levante's design. It is very different from its competitors, but overall I still haven't totally warmed up to the look. It's at least kind of sporty out back with quad exhaust tips and a roof spoiler, but the profile view is a little plain, even with the character line that rises above the rear fender. How's the storage? The Levante has a little bit less trunk space than some of its similarly sized competitors. And perhaps some of the most notable issues are that this roof line is really, really sloped so you can't stack stuff up inside. And compared to the width of the car, the opening is relatively narrow. Now I think a lot of families would be okay with this trunk space since you can fold down the back seats. But as you'll see, we had a little bit more trouble than we expected fitting our away luggage back there. The center console compartment is ridiculously deep and has two cup holders at the bottom. There are two more cup holders further forward in the console, a storage cubby ahead of the shifter, and door pockets that'll hold smaller items. Is it roomy? The driver and passenger get lots of room and there's a ton of flexibility in the power seats and the power adjustable steering wheel. But if I'm honest, even using the various buttons for the power lumbar options, I have yet to find a truly comfortable seating position that doesn't leave me fidgeting. The back seat is impressively spacious too. There's enough headroom for me to sit up straight and plenty of legroom. But again, I'm never really that comfortable. And the low seat cushion has me in a slight knees up stance that might prove tiresome on a longer journey. How does the interior feel? There are a lot of really nice materials in the Levante. All this leather on the dashboard, for instance, and the partial leather seats are really, really nice. I really like the real metal used for the paddle shifters, and that this key has real metal, it's got real weight to it, it's not just plastic. But there are some other things that don't feel quite as fancy as this car's price tag. I'm talking about all these plastic controls here and the plastic steering wheel controls. I also really dislike the fact that the on-off switch is all the way down here by your left knee. Is it well equipped? Definitely, with standard equipment including an 8.4 inch touchscreen infotainment system, 19 inch wheels, a power lift gate, heated front seats, power seats, and so on. On this particular model, we've also got goodies like 20 inch wheels, a panoramic sunroof, an upgraded sound system, adaptive cruise control, heated and cooled seats, and a heated steering wheel. Buyers can even pick a variety of different colors for the brake calipers, as well as wheels up to 21 inches in diameter. How's the infotainment system? Although it's been a little buggy in our testing, the infotainment system is great overall. It's the same basic system used in lots of other Dodge, Jeep, and Chrysler products, which means snappy responses, large icons that are easy to use at a glance, and great functionality. I do think it's a little disappointing to pay so much for this car and then get the same system as in a Jeep Grand Cherokee, but only drivers who are really well-versed in those models will notice. There's also support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Is it a good daily driver? In everyday driving, there's nothing too much to complain about with the Levante. The one thing I will say is that the ride is a little firmer than I expected, even with the air suspension set to its default setting. There's a couple of different modes for the air suspension. It automatically lowers when you get to highway speeds to improve aerodynamics. And there's even an off-road mode if for some reason you decided you wanted to take your Maserati off-roading. There's also a button down here called Ice, which is not about winter driving. It's for increased control and efficiency. Basically, it just makes the throttle response really lazy for fuel economy. There's also an engine stop-start feature, which for the most part is pretty unobtrusive. So in a general sense, driving this as a daily driver is pretty nice. It's 
reasonably quiet, it's very easy to see out of and so on. Uh, it's just perhaps a little stiffer riding than I expected. Is it fun to drive? Pushing the sport button down here makes the exhaust a little louder, it sharpens up the throttle response, the transmission stays a gear lower. But in a general sense, I guess the Levante is fun enough to drive. This is the base Levante with 345 horsepower from the 3-liter bi-turbocharged V6. There's also a Levante S, which is much sportier with 424 horsepower. So that's the one to get if you're really after a performance model. This one though is okay. I think the transmission is really responsive to the paddle shifters. I think the steering is quite good. And with the air suspension lowered down in its sport setting, it handles corners pretty well overall. My big disappointment, I guess, with sport mode is that aside from some sort of raspiness when you upshift and a slightly deeper idle, the exhaust isn't really as loud or dramatic as I expected. This is a Maserati, a brand that built its name on emotional, evocative cars, and for the most part, the engine's still pretty quiet and just droney and dull. I guess I was really hoping that switching to sport mode would make it a lot more exciting than it is. And in a general sense, this car starts at over $70,000, and it's pretty fun as a sporty crossover, but for that much money, you can get really, really sporty crossovers. The Porsche Cayenne springs to mind, and even entries like the new Jaguar F-Pace are a lot more fun to drive. How's the fuel economy? Rated at 14 miles per gallon city, 20 MPG highway, and 16 combined, all on premium gas, this Levante is not particularly thrifty at the gas pump. In fact, I don't think I've seen the trip computer read higher than 15 MPG this week. And that's despite the fact that the Levante has stop-start as standard. How much is it? The Levante starts at about $73,000, and then the sporty Levante S is about $83,000 before any options. That's a lot of money for this class. The Levante is not a budget pick. What are the negatives? Frankly, compared to some other sporty luxury SUVs in its class, the Levante is pretty expensive. And it's neither the most luxurious nor the most fun car you can buy in its segment. But I think perhaps the biggest issue of all is that if you're looking for an Italian SUV, well, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio is on the way. I think it looks prettier, and with a 505 horsepower Quadrifoglio model, it might be more fun to drive as well. Who should buy it? First and foremost, you buy the Levante because you like the way it looks, and you just like the Maserati brand. And it's true that this car does look very distinctive. It's turned a lot of heads on the street while we've been driving it. But when I think about other competitive SUVs, well, it's hard to think of a specific area in which the Levante is best in class. But if you do like the way it looks and you really want to drive an SUV with the Maserati Trident on the hood, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with this. If you liked this wide buy, be sure to click the like button and scroll down to leave a comment if you have any questions about this. You should also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get a new wide buy every week, plus tons of other great video content. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at motorone.com.